Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. FAA releases UAS remote tracking and ID ARC report. FCC finds maker of audio-visual transmitters for drones. And drone operations restricted over certain DOE facilities. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world. With more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The UAS Identification and Tracking Aviation Rulemaking Committee, chartered by the FAA in June, has submitted its report and recommendations to the Agency on Technologies Available to identify and track drones in flight and other associated issues. The ARC 74 members represented a diverse array of stakeholders that included the aviation community and industry member organizations, law enforcement agencies, and public safety organizations, manufacturers, researchers, and standard entities involved with UAS. Overall, the ARC provided the FAA with a substantial amount of useful data, including very detailed technology evaluations and a complete comprehensive list of law enforcement needs and preferences. The ARC's recommendations and suggestions, which are fully detailed in the report, cover issues related to existing and emerging technologies, law enforcement and security, and implementation of remote identification and tracking. While the ARC reached consensus on most issues, there were dissenting opinions, primarily over which drones the ID and tracking requirements should apply. Many of those dissenting opinions expressed concerns that exempting model aircraft operating under Section 336 of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 would undermine the value of an ID and tracking requirement. Other dissenting opinions touched upon issues such as privacy and lack of detail or consideration for ATC involvement. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Chad Bidrow, AMA's PR and Government Affairs Director, provided reaction to recent UAS tracking and remote identification ARC recommendations in which they participated. Today's announcement is another step towards fostering safety in the national airspace. We agree that tracking and remote identification makes sense at some level, depending on the UAS sophistication and capability. We strongly believe that we must also continue educating all UAS pilots, which is what truly equips hobbyists and commercial operators to fly responsibly. We look forward to continuing our work with the FAA and UAS industry stakeholders to keep our skies safe for all. Nathan Metzler of Davis, California is the winner of the AMA Foundation for the Future Sweepstakes. He will receive round-trip airfare to Ontario, California, a three-day, two-night stay at Doubletree by Hilton, free admission to AMA Expo West, and a rental car and a spending stipend, and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to ride in Lady Alice, a full-scale P-51 Mustang. The Foundation for the Future Sweepstakes raised some $65,000 for AMA's benevolent programs. We hate to admit this, but not all drone fans are good. As evidenced by the recent theft of two small drones from a Walgreens pharmacy earlier this month in Fountain, Colorado. The theft happened on December 8th at the store in the 7900 block of Fountain Mesa Road. But security cameras captured the suspect as he walked into the store. The two drones he stole were valued at $240. If you can identify the suspect, call the Fountain Police Department at 719-382-8555. Not sure what to make of this, but then again, we're continually amazed at the ways drones manifest themselves in solving today's problems. Still, as the video shows, this one kind of sets a new standard. Twitter's Tom Hall noted that Chinese government uses drones with flamethrowers to clean power lines. And guess what? It seems to work. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The FCC has fined a Florida company 
$180,000 for marketing transmitters for drones that operate on frequencies not authorized for that purpose. According to the FCC, the company Lumineer Holco LLC of Sarasota, Florida, advertised and sold non-compliant audiovisual transmitters intended for use with remotely piloted aircraft on its various websites in violation of the Commission's Equipment Marketing and Amateur Radio Operation Rules. These laws ensure that radio frequency devices comply with the Commission's technical requirements and do not interfere with authorized communications. The non-compliant AV transmitters could operate in bands that are reserved for federal government and other important operations, including Federal Aviation Administration, airport operations, and satellite communications. Some of the AV transmitters also operated at power levels that exceeded limits set by the Commission's rules. To settle this matter, Lumineer has admitted that it market the non-compliant AV transmitters, will implement a compliance plan, and will pay $180,000 civil penalty. At the request of U.S. national security and law enforcement agencies, the FAA is using its existing authority under Title 14 of Code of Federal Regulations, Section 99.7, Special Security Instructions, to address concerns about unauthorized drone operations over seven Department of Energy facilities. The FAA and DOE have agreed to restrict drone flights up to 400 feet within the lateral boundaries of several sites. The airspace restrictions are shown in an FAA notice to airmen, and the details about where drone flights are restricted are available here. These UAS national security restrictions are pending until they become effective on December 29, 2017. There are only a few exceptions that permit drone flights within these restrictions, and they must be coordinated with the individual facility and or the FAA. To ensure the public is aware of these restricted locations, the FAA has created an interactive map online. The link to these restrictions is also included in the FAA's Before You Fly mobile app. The app will be updated within 60 days to reflect these airspace restrictions. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.